sit there, so you look at me, and you know, your, your face shows up in that. <laughs> okay, so you're okay. supposed to uh, start integrating our modules, uh, which we have. No, go start with your, uh, what is your project about? Uh, so this is about, So what events are you doing right now? Uh, we are mainly focusing on Hurricane Sandy uh -huh. and we wanted to run our algorithm to uh, US election 2012 also, but uh, we have some uh, issues with data collection. So, uh, we US elections is a larger event, especially on Wikipedia for 2012 election, the page was created in 2008. So we've got larger number of uh, entities being added and removed and all of that and the time period is bigger. So for experiment we want to take an event which is relatively smaller so the hurricane sandy is like the page was created a week before the hurricane and so now till now we've got like around 300 uh, three months of data so that's relatively easier to track Described in Wikipedia or Wikipedia? Uh, entity is described in Wikipedia. Mm. So we, we have to find uh, what are the entities. Have, I mean, she has already done that. Mm. Uh, right. so what are the entities in uh, Wikipedia? Yeah. So we are actually, the score that we are calculating, which is the step that I'm doing right now, is uh, we want to use the measure of both Wikipedia page views and uh, the entities, which have a lot of mentions in tweets. So we are combining those two scores, coming up with one measure and using that to novelty here in terms of, you know, uh, the, the, the lot of work on the BPD spotlight and its use. Is there anything new here? Yes, uh, we believe that there hasn't been any work done on ranking the uh, entities related. related to a particular base, yeah. a temporal ranking of entities. Okay. That has not been done before. So can, you de can you show it as a result, uh, the temporal ranking and like as visualization or a... So we are doing a timeline. Yes, the timeline. We are putting yeah. that on timeline. a timeline. Yeah. So we are using a similar timeline widget for Okay. And we are putting, uh, we are ranking the entities and putting them on Have you discussed, uh, showed this to Pablo? Uh, we don't Pablo have probably results. Have, but not us. Hmm. I, mean, I think we will need some more significant results to show. I mean, we have not showed this as such. Maybe Pavan has conceptually yeah. talked to Pablo about it. Okay. So, yeah. That's fair. You know how 
copy will you? We'll be using Google Trends. So in Google Trends, you can go and uh, just enter any keyword, and it will give you the search terms in Google. That I mean, whenever you search, so user searches statistics for that. For now, we can only think of that because uh, other than that, I'm not sure how we would uh, if there is anything out there which is actually ranking entities related to an event. So I think we would have. I to think in a week or so. You should uh, have a call with uh, pra Pablo. He'll be here in the last week of you know, the exam week. He'll be here. So, and he'll be presenting his prospectus. But uh, you may want to do this uh, as an event. Maybe you get an idea and pick something out. Okay. What is semantic here? So, uh, mainly we use, uh, we identify entities and uh, how, how these entities uh, appear with two different uh, databases and we, we, we use. So the Wikipedia plays a role uh, of a background knowledge here. So we rely on Wikipedia revisions mm. plus Wikipedia paid views. Mm. Paid views not a, a semantic measure, it's a static mm. measure, mm. but uh, Wikipedia uh, revision text and the entities uh, that are mentioned there, mm. we take that into consideration plus uh, the entity is mentioned in Crete. So those are the main two uh, semantic measures that we are mm. using. All right, next. Sujan, you want to go? So each of you basically start out by saying your you know topic, uh, what is what you think is novel uh, and semantic about it. Uh, talk talk about where you are in the project, uh, what are problems you are facing, mm -hmm. how you can address it, uh, are you on schedule, and how will you evaluate? It? These are some of the key things you want to walk through, and that's it. Okay, so I think everybody got chance to explain their project in the previous one of the previous class. They didn't, uh, so probably I'll go through the. So basically, uh, we name it as connecting dots in the electronic media records. Uh, so our intention is to understand the electronic medical records in a much better way, uh, understanding in a sense machine understanding. Uh, what I mean by machine understanding is people do entity extraction, entity identification, and then the most important thing is how do you relate those entities uh, in particular context, context in a sense within a particular document. So because the, if you have two particular entities, uh, let's say you have set of group of entities, it's not the same way it is being linked in the every documents. It's different. So we need to do it in a, a very contextual manner. Uh, so basically, uh, at this moment, people have invented a lot of techniques to uh, do NLP on this kind of unstructured document getting the entities out and getting the uh, basically uh, annotate uh, against uh, standard vocabularies and all these kind of uh, negation detection and status detection and all these things. But uh, uh, there's no work being done on uh, detecting the, the relationship between the entities in one particular document because it's hard, it's hard problem because uh, uh, rarely you will see those uh, links presented in uh, uh, explicitly uh, written in electronic medical records. So, so perhaps one of the case would be you have a medication and then you have a disease. So what we are trying to conclude just by looking at the document is that this medication is trying to tackle this particular disease. Because you can have a list of diseases. You can have high blood pressure, you can have tachycardia, uh, irregular heartbeat, and then you bunch of medicines like aspirin, which can be blood thinner or painkiller, and then you have other medications. So how do you conclusively say that this medication is targeting this symptom? So yeah. that's what we're trying to come up with in this case. Uh, to do the, uh, the motivation for this project is, uh, okay, relationship identification is a motivation, but it's technically. But uh, uh, in, in medical records, you may find 
countries in a sense that uh, uh, there may be occasions where uh, uh, the statements say presence of some condition and absence of some condition. So can you use some kind of technique to resolve those things? Uh, one particular way to go about it is like if you can identify the medications given to some condition that actually means uh, that particular condition is present in the uh, particular patient. So the key is to identify the relationship, then you can go about that. But in this project, project we are focusing on how to identify the uh, relationship between the uh, uh, concepts. So and up to now, uh, we, have, uh, we have done some analysis on graph-based thing. Uh, but I don't need to discuss about how, right? The first, actually, the first uh, way we tried it, uh, we don't have good results on that. We had validated that two domain expert, uh, our results were not that good. Uh, so now that is kind of a guessing algorithm. Now we are trying to uh, get into the uh, sentences itself and try to un uh, uh, identify the relationship if it is uh, explicitly mentioned in the document. So Gauris is working on. Uh, Identifying the sentences and the uh, the, co the concept because the NLP will give you the, all the entities and the, uh, all the entities, but uh, you need to figure out these two entities are appearing in the same sentence uh, so that whenever you have these particular entities, you can go to the uh, knowledge base and see what are the possible relationship between these uh, two entities. And with that hypothesis, you can come back to the document and again validate whether that is there in the document. So that is the approach we are uh, right now. Uh, that's our approach. So, uh, so status is our first uh, uh, approach has, I would say, like 60% of accuracy, and we are trying to uh, improve that with uh, explicit thing. But uh, with the second approach, I don't think we can. Our uh, coverage may be low because uh, uh, with that approach, we are tackling all the uh, all the instances where that relationship is explicitly mentioned in the documents. That is the first way, and then we are trying to uh, do some weighted kind of calculation and to uh, uh, do the next guessing algorithm. So the, pre the first approach we did, we didn't have any seed things to uh, do the guessing. We did be, uh, totally on the graph-based things. I, I will uh, demonstrate these things when it comes to, uh, to present the how part. Uh, yeah, so we are doing the next thing. So my project was basically an overview of goal approach models of BL. And I won't spend too much time on it because it's not like the final presentation. But part of the overview is basically we know about <coughs> natural language processing. We've talked about sample processor, the other one we talked about. Um, we know semantic web. There's a new one called SenseBot I found the other day. I don't know if it's new, but it's new to me. We have DuckDuckGo, et cetera. We know about machine learning decision trees and all that. So we have all of these tools, but they seem to be kind of not separate from each other, but kind of not like using each other together, it's like not an integration. 
It's like, yeah, the people that are in camp NLP, the people that are in camp machine learning, people that are in camp semantic web, they're not kind of like seeing if any of them can be used together. And NLP, they use a little bit together, but so the goal is what if we could combine all of them in a proof of concept method? Like, can we make it to where we could use all these techniques to start building ontologies? Sort of like an, I guess you say automated ontology building, but also make the search engine completely just keep learning. Not, lear not learning, but keep teaching. It's like finding correlation between things, finding new information drawing correlation between those informations to build new ontologies, keep up to date to the kind of lesson the human interaction involved to keep the ontologies to get uh, up to date. So the goal is to design a proof of concept. Would it work? Is it possible? Maybe, maybe not. So the approach is basically design a program that will basically parse sentences. That's easy, that was done. That was simple. Um, next was search dictionary and possible use of the word. So like try and basically from the ground up build it. NLP targeted towards this kind of idea, not just NLP that'll do everything. NLP that'll actually work for what you're targeting your what audience What dictionary for. can you use? Hmm? What dictionary? So, I started thinking about using an online dictionary first, like Webster or one of those. Then I decided if we could download a text-based document, right, so like a, you know, like a Webster in text-based format, and use one of those, like a real dictionary, like an English dictionary, hmm. and use that because that has, while it'll change from year to year, most of the core words are in there, right? So like your words and all the uses, nouns, adverbs, will all be in there. So that's what I was targeting it for. So basically figure out what the word is. Then design a program to look for the word. So the word may be in dictionary, but like cars, as an example I'll show later. But unless you use dictionary definition of those words, what kind of meaning the system has? It's just a word, that's all. There is nothing yeah. more than that. So it's just a word, right? So the computer has no idea if Unless it's you're going to use synonyms, sentinyms, uh, mm -hmm all that uh, kind of stuff, then that may make sense. Yeah, so right now the program actually finds, like, the, the noun, get, has an example of it, locates that, but it's just words in size, but it does keep finding, like, noun, then it can be, you know, verb, and adverb, and how it can be used differently. So it does go through and find the different ideas, but right now it doesn't know what those are. So the next step was, you know, you basically know what a word is, right, but it doesn't know what those words are. So then kind of start using the internet to find a, a better meaning of those words go online, figure out if you can find out, like, the example I had later on is Cars. Cars is also a Disney movie. We talk about plural as, like, automobile cars. So, dictionary's not going to have the word cars in it as auto, like a movie, right? But Google being those will, so they can further, like, build its, basically, database, or knowledge, if you want to call it. And so, how are you going to find Cars is a proper name of a movie also? So, what it'll do is, um, I can skip it. Yeah, I can back. So, what it does is, um, it basically goes through and finds, this is a dictionary search. The MATLAB printout doesn't show up too good on that screen. But for your, I can answer your question in a couple slides. that cool? Okay. So basically it's a MATLAB. So the whole program is written in MATLAB because MATLAB is really good at handling massive, big array databases. So I figure if we're doing anything with tree structure, MATLAB's got a real good tree structure interface and it's good at handling arrays. Big, large data sets MATLAB can crunch through pretty quick. So I targeted MATLAB for the development. So basically right now what's doing is going through and it's typing a simple sentence. It's finding... I have it ignoring little words like the, the words that you were, like, just a proof of concept, finding big words, verbs, nouns, adverbs, those kind of words, get rid of the prepositions, you know, the articles, things like that, that aren't going to be too much of a big hit on the sentence. So they will look at all the words, and what it does will give you a list of what those words are. And then, because of a uh, limitation in MATLAB, I couldn't use Google to do the searching because of the way MATLAB's URL reads back at a core level. It uses command prompt to interact with it, so that was a limitation. So right now, it's going to find a word, it'll send the query to Bing, bring back the, the page source, and start looking for the links in the page source. So try not to use anything up front, just trying to find individual link pages. So no outside information, just try and figure out what that page says, go to it, and then parse that page again. So that's where I got that part to. Basically going through and basically learning what the words are, finding words about it. And then I took a step back and said, okay, that part we're now, so how can I take this data I have and start designing the tree structure, start designing the weighting algorithms, you know, things like how can, what can I do with all the information I have now? So I took a step back from that and thought it was going to be a little more conceptual problem, so I'm hitting that now, actually. So then I started, okay, let's do images, because everybody's talking about images. So if you're being reserved for cars, the one on the right or left is what you actually get back, right? So my code actually goes through and grabs the links and pulls the image from the actual website it's in by using the image source tag in the page source. Runs it through MATLAB, converts to grayscale because um, RGB 
is a little more difficult because it's matching, but that can actually play, actually help you identify things. Converts to an RGB, or converts from RGB to grayscale. And then I started running through convolution algorithms. You know, there's a training set, that's a tire, right? That's a wheel. Right? So I was okay, well, maybe the computer can find the algorithm for convolution. When I ran a convolution, the image on the right, uh, you really can't see it because of the lighting, but the image on the right gives you a um, peak kind of hit, like a frequency map, you with that lit. So dark spots are no hits, bright spots are higher hits, and then the whites is the highest hit of all of them. And that kind of convolution is a way to find things in the images. But the convolution method here won't work because it's going to be dynamic, right? Your background's changing, your tire is completely different than the tire on that car. So I start thinking about, okay, look at the shape of the spherical. So looking for spherical things. So you can break the images into individual pieces and have a training data set that'll match that on the fly. Because this is a normal car. Like, if you go to, a, if you go back to the image, the thing to the right of it is a typical car, right? The naked image is a typical car, you'll be able to find that. This is just a special car. So the idea is, you know, my code, now I'm at the spot, and that could also branch off there, is make my image analysis better. So how can I make the image analysis better using uh, segments? How do you think it is a search engine? Hmm? Are you using, building a new search engine? So I'm trying to build. I'm trying to build it to contain both things. You so it's not engine. clear. Uh, hmm? and I, I'm not able to see any semantics here, particularly use using of the dictionary. The way you are is no semantics really. No. So this is just to get the information. Okay. So then once it builds the information, then it starts looking at the information it has. It starts saying, okay, at I this found point, this to at you. this point, please try to make it clear what semantic search you are going to do, if that is your object. Uh, give a, um, come up with some scenario that you think you will be able to demonstrate, saying that this is my form of semantic search. Um, even if it does not scale massively, you're not, that's not in, you know, expectation. But um, conceptually, even on thousand document or thousand objects or whatever, can you show something that is, if that is what you're doing, if you're, what you're doing is, building is some sort of unique semantic search engine, then show what should be expected of a semantic search engine, and then say whether you can do that or not. And then we'll worry about whether you are doing it in the right way or not. But at this point, I don't see a clear objective on which you're going to evaluate your system. You mean a clear objective on how you would evaluate it? Yeah. So how would I know that you, you, start, you started with some objective, and how would I, uh, you know, that objective at a very broad, broad, uh, broad level that you put in your slide is no good. Uh, how would you actually demonstrate it by an example is what is you should also spend some time on and for your data and then say, can, can you get your system to be good enough to be able to find what you think you should find? So I guess to answer your question in a different kind of way. So let's say we type in the example we had Tesla, right? We type in, you type in um, Tesla Model S, right? So the way the code would work is that we go through and say, okay, Tesla can be Nikola Tesla, it can be a Tesla coil, it can be this. It's going to have that dot, it's going to already have used that code to get its knowledge database, right? Okay. So once it finds that, it says, okay, Tesla can have a person, let's just say it's three, it could be Nikola Tesla, a Tesla coil, or a car company. Yes. Because so it could be those three things, right? So if your system understands these three options, mm -hmm. um, that's a great thing. Yeah. If your system, uh, you know, then, uh, you know, says that, uh, I have found a result for all the three types, or, I found, or I'm going to rank according to this strategy, that's also a great thing. Um, it's just that I don't understand how your system is going to understand Tesla, Tesla because using dictionary, that is no, that's not going to have Tesla. Yes, yeah, so you use dictionary to find out what, in that sentence, what Tesla could possibly be. Okay. What, what context in that sentence can it be? Can it be a noun? Can it be, I guess, Tesla, as long as a noun, or an adjective, Tesla coin. But um, find out what it is can be used in that sentence. And then once you go through it, you find out that, okay, a noun can be used in this way. Right? So you could go to Bing, right, and say, okay, Tesla coil, or Tesla, what is Tesla? You start parsing the page, now there's gonna be a stopping algorithm, but eventually you gotta call it quits when you start learning. Right, so it'll go through and say, okay, Tesla can be this, 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 and this, right? When one of those hits, let's just say that Tesla car comes up, right? Well then using knowledge from your previous sentence, Tesla Model S, you know, Tesla can be a car company, when it does Model S, when it searches for that, it's more likely, I'm guessing the first one type Model S is one word, right, because I haven't tried to figure out yet, that correlation if it's a split. So Model S is one word. But because of that, Model S will also have Tesla, you know, and like just be Tesla, just be words at that point though, right? So now it knows that you were looking for a Tesla as a car, Model S type of car, 
Where well, I, I, but I don't see a model. Where is your ontology, or where is your, where is your conceptual model, or where is your domain model for cars, for names of cars, or so you, uh, for models of cars? Any of the things you want to. So do. it's teaching itself what it is. Okay. It's so trying to figure out what it is. It's trying to figure out is that a car? Right? Okay. It's trying to figure out what the worst could possibly. So be what your system know. would know? How would the system know there is a car? And wh why? How does it represent in your system there is a car? But it's going to store the picture. And, uh, and, 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 and how are you going to associate the uh, word C A R with that? Tag it. Who so will like tag it? Hmm? Who will tag it? The computer will tag it. Once it knows it's a car, okay. it'll have like, let's say if it's 40% sure it's a car, that's, okay. that's wrong. Right? Let's okay. say it's 80% sure it's a car. Okay. It'll tag it. And right? why, why won't it tag automobile? It could tag automobile if you want. But so right now, it, it searched for cars. So what so right now, the code went to being in search cars, mm. and it found this, and let's say it found it, said of 80% accuracy, a CI of 80%, common sense 80%, we know this is a car. So now it tags that with the word car, right? A car can also be an automobile. So by using a dictionary, you know that car can also be an automobile. Right? So now you can add tag it as also an automobile. Okay, so, so it would be good for you to have a clarity on uh, how scalable, not in the physical sense, not in terms of how much data, but scalable in a, Semantic sense saying, would you be able to understand car? Would you be able to say about buses? Would you be able to understand about planes? Or what, what are the kind of possible things it can do? Or what do you have to do for your system to be able to do new things? Sure. That'll be very uh, useful for you to you know, make it clear how the system will uh, have a semantic skill, scalability on the topics or subjects that it can search for. Sure. And if there is a way of organizing that, then I think you've got to done something interesting. But there's no way to organize it, and it's just like one of thing you just figure out somehow with this car, then it would be not that interesting. Yeah, well, so, so I'm trying to piece, so it's, the idea is here, I'm trying to get these two things to work independently first, and then dependently in the middle. Okay. So it's two different programs right now, but don't be on each other later. So you can't design anything from the ground up. I, my problem is that I, I've not seen any significant source of semantics in your project. So in another project, for example, somebody uses DBpedia, or somebody uses a knowledge base for uh, some medical domain. I understand where the semantics is coming from, where it means from. I don't understand in your case where does it come from. So I'm trying to, it's not, it's not coming from anywhere. It's trying to build the semantic knowledge database. It's trying to build that from the ground up without having a user. Yeah, but then, 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 yes, but then I don't see what kind of data you're building ground upon, what kind of, you know, whether you're doing training or set on the, you know, machine learning on the data, whether you're doing, uh, I know you said you're doing parsing, but then, from that, how do I know which elements I'm going to understand and how? Uh, what is the third party knowledge basis you're using? I don't understand that. W the knowledge that you need to understand whether something is a car, is it in your corpus already? How it is there? Is it, for example, because uh, all these images show in it, there is a tagging in the caption car, and that's why you knew it? Or what are the different things that you are using so that you know it is a car? That I didn't understand. You still understand it? So yes. Can somebody else explain? So maybe we'll take some back. So the overall goal of the program is to have no database to start with. Right? The only database you'll possibly have is, let's say you have a train data set of planes, cars, things like that, right, to teach it. So you do have a, a solid database to start with, just one little Database in things. what form? In text it can just or be web pages or in so uh, we'll just database? Sit with, let's just sit with images. So we have, we have a dictionary, a text-based dictionary. Right? Okay. So that's one thing that we have. Right? Then we have, let's just say we stick with cars. We have pictures, we have a picture of a car, a couple pictures of a car, right? And then like the Who said features. they are cars? Hmm? Who said that they are cars? We just cut pieces out of it, right? So like it's a wheel, right? So wheels in a dictionary, right? Picture of a wheel. Mm -hmm. right? And you're going, to, you're going to tag it yourself manually that that's a wheel? Yeah, you can say it's, it's a wheel. So a but you're going to do that manually? Yeah, you can manually have a small data set. If you want to do it that way, I'm just trying to bring it, I'm trying to bring it into perspective, right? Eventually, you won't have to do that, but bring it into perspective, right? So then from there, when the code goes out and it starts to say, okay, we cars, we go to cars, right, on Bing, and we find this image, right? It starts to look at it and says, okay, what can I do? Let's say it finds it, CI 80%, it finds it as a car. It tags it as a car. But because of the dictionary, it also knows that car can be an automobile, it can be red, green, blue, it can have three wheels, it can have four dictionary wheels. Dictionary won't tell it to be red, green, green, blue. You, so, cars has a picture. It knows by doing the picture. It knows what color it is. 
How does this program understand that this picture has a color? That's RGB. That's simple. Right? That's a hue space. So you have three arrays. An RGB picture has three arrays, red, green, and blue scales. Right? Three yeah. arrays, that. X and Y positions. So you would know based off the array you extract. If it's a three-dimensional array, it's an RGB image. If it's a two-dimensional array, it's a grayscale image. No, because now it's going to remember. It's going to remember what this car looks like. Right? Yeah, it's going but to, it's like other shapes for the past, right? Yeah, true, right. So then it knows that. So when it does damage analysis, it finds the defining features of the car, right? So it's okay. Features in a sense. Hmm? Features in a sense. What kind of features? So cars have wheels, tires. They have rearview mirrors. Okay, but we I don't know if any. Do you have other other vehicles too, right? Yes, that's true. Right. So it's going to say, well, in this case, this car, there was a hit. There was um. 80% sure it was a car. It had, in this case, we saw it has one wheel, defining one wheel, right? It was, what, orange, before I convert it down. It was orange and black. And it looks like it had, you know, headlights, right? So then when it stores all that, it tags, it knows what those values were that it found, it used to find it. But all these are very common for all vehicles, right? True. Right. How do you discriminate between the cars and uh, Jeeps and all these things? Well, Jeeps, okay, so. Thanks about yeah. yeah, so cars and buses can be different, right? So you could actually do a length scale on it if you wanted. How long was it? But then what did you cut off for a bus? But those are very fine-grained learning, right? Mm -hmm. how, image, how can you compare the lens? I mean, a car in an image could be having the same length as a bus yeah. in an image. That's true, but so in this case, you can actually look at the pixel density between the images, right? There's no, there's no scale marker on this image, right? So that kind of hurts you a little bit, right? If you assume that an average person is, let's say, 5'10", right? How would you assume? I mean, how would your programmer assume unless you tell the program the program would know, won't know? It's going to say it's a car. Hmm? Maybe what you can do is try to reduce the scope a little bit and get an idea what kind of features that you're exactly modeling, and then your output will be, uh, output will depend on the, on, on the way that how you model it. Otherwise, talking it in a more general sense, Let's say it does come back and say it's a bus, mm -hmm. right? So what the computer is wrong? You know, now it's a car, right? So it comes back saying it's forty percent bus and sixty percent car. It, I don't. It doesn't make sense. It's, to a, it's, it's a, a scale. No, it's not right. work. See, see, it you, 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 here is a car, and the number of cars that have this thing kind of jetting out will be very, very few. Right. And then you're going to say there is a special car that has, you know, this kind of stuff. It's not, you know, uh, not going to be, you, you find an old car where they will put a spare wheel here. Mm -hmm. And now you can say that there's a car, there's a, you know, I can see in the car this wheel, this wheel is spare wheel. I can't see this wheel, I can't see the back wheel. And so I don't know what features that car has by itself, unless you are going to have a model of a car and this will be expected in a train. So in general, I don't see um, uh, how your uh, uh, learning algorithm really works to understand of uh, any of the features. There are, at least to my knowledge, not a, uh, any good, uh, you give a, there's no algorithm that I know of, where you give this image and it will automatically know that these are distinctive parts in the real world. It can come up with the image segmentation. For example, the, it may come with this image segmentation because you see this color, you know, uh, it stands out. Frankly, there is no real part like that. It's actually a part of this because of the shading it doesn't, uh, you know, show it with me. So, uh, you know, for a, an algorithm to automatically understand what components there are and whether there is a wheel or not, and what you're going to call a wheel and whether you're going to four wheel or five wheels, these are the things that I don't see how, uh, you know, a, a general purpose system can be built. Let's leave it at that, think about it, um, and, uh, you know, also just basically uh, figure out that for whatever you want to do, uh, say here is uh, how I know I'm successful. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you figure out some queries that you're going to do to demonstrate your system and make sure that you can trace to and show that indeed your system can potentially do that, even if for a small amount of data, it doesn't matter.
and that would be a nice way for you to you know kind of proceed and, and potentially be successful. If you can do those queries, I think you've done something. Okay. Yeah. All right, back there, Nishita. So is DVPDA, does DVPDA have a good coverage of the disease that you have? Uh, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. We, yes. Uh, you, do you create expression? Even any we models are saying that this is uh, targeted for diabetes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, diabetes is targeted for diabetes. Yeah. Uh, so we are using DVPDA. Uh, DVPDA is a good coverage of the disease that you have. Uh, uh, right? Yeah, uh, we, yes. Uh, you, do you create expression? Even any models saying that this is diabetes is type 2, diabetes is type 1, diabetes, all that stuff? We are using for this actually MetaMap also. Yeah. MetaMap, like to classify uh, the tweet, like is more relevant to uh, like is diabetes or 
How would you evaluate quality of your results? Actually, there are some authentication source uh, like some NLP. Some I forget the name. Actually. National NIH. What about NIH? No, he's just saying that we are going to authenticate it. What about what the information we get? And not that. I mean, how do you know the quality of result is good? What results we get? Mm. Uh, basically, the major key point we're doing is uh, one part is. Like Informative analysis also, like tweet. You want to know about the tweet? Is informative? How do you know? How do you evaluate that the results are good? Uh, actually, right now we have the just uh, storing all the information and using the informative analysis, like whatever uh, is very informative or not. How? How do you know it's informative? Like using hash, like is available URL is available or not? Or no, no. Those are the ways that uh, you are. Those are your features. Those are the properties that you're using to, uh, you know, give something more credence and something less credence, or something more important, something less important. Yes. But how do you know the end result of whatever you do, all these things, uh, how do you know the end results are good quality results? Actually, uh, one more thing here also, we are doing like author, author verification also. I know that. But how do you know if the results are still good? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we are trusting, like, basically it's coming from trusted sources, so we are... So what? So, I mean, we can say that it is a reputed thing and... and which, one, which of the stores is more reputable? How do you know uh, that you have the right reputation model? We have to analyze once we get how... Actually, that is like, once we got the real-time analysis data, that it, uh, we, we, are, we are creating the template also for that. So any, in that any, time project, like any project you know, it would be wise to always ask question very early, how do you know you are successful? I don't think you answered that question yet very well. Hmm? Make sure that you so know you that... GSP page, right? Yeah, you this are collecting information yeah, this is from, from, the, from the normal manual users. Yeah. And that's how you can evaluate, right? Is we can, this is one thing. We are, it's not just... I mean, it's integrated, it's so many things. One is manually, one is from trusted sources, how many times it's retweeted, how 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 often they're discussing this thing. And the author description also, like yeah. somebody who are consulting in diabetes, some kind mm. of thing. So they are uh, like putting some uh, information on Twitter. Mm. So we come to know that this user is like authenticated. Mm. So we are using so the these are questions in which we are collecting data from people and we are storing it for analysis. Mm. And this basically tells about mm. how informative a tweet is, how much okay. they trust it. Okay. And this part is done, we have good. the collected but information. That is the way you are doing it, okay, good. All right, will we be finishing? You, you, you will finish it? This one you want to milestone like whatever we have completed and what are the in progress. Okay. All right. Next. Michael. Oh, Mary. Mary, come.
architecture of the system um, first of all and then we go through the milestone um, this is the actually healthcare architecture which as you see that uh, we have like two sensors here uh, for weight, uh, heart rate and blood pressure now um, not really but basically this is the existing K-Health yes, architecture yeah. so, so this is simple and uh, they actually they store data in the school light and they don't really store data in the uh, repository, they store data in the mobile application. And um, they have, uh, they didn't really use ontology and uh, annotation part and the novelty of our work is not can we convert this architecture to the uniform open and closed architecture, also as I said, uh, adding the uh, semantic touch. Let's go to, um, how about go to, Yeah, this is the this is sort of our new architecture, integrating uh, the Open ML uh, standard into it for the store for sort of storage and enhancing uh, the observations by annotating them and storing them somewhere in the triple store. There's obviously a lot here. I don't want to go into too much detail at this point. But as Mary explained, our two two main goals are to uh, integrate the Open ML architecture, which it, uh, which makes the data more readily accessible through a uh, standard, through an upcoming standard, rather than it being locked to the device, and then enhance the data semantically. What is that upcoming standard? Huh? What is that upcoming standard? Open ML. Yeah, it's still working on its version 1.0. So as Mary said, it seems like a good time that mm -hmm. if you want to, you know, let's check out semantics. Mm -hmm. Here's like a shortened list of our milestones. Uh, we spent a, we spent more, a little more time than we expected doing research, so our implementation is lagging by a week, week and a half. But we feel like we have a, a good plan for the next couple weeks to get everything together. Because, you know, we could sort of move a little faster. Because we had to first of all understand the k house architecture itself. We had to go through the, um, I mean, uh, building the architecture in the database in k house and then we had to also understand the architecture of uh, the new, actually, the open end house, the different component of open end house, as it's a DPU, uh, the visualization part, the process part, and the storage part, which uh, yeah, is very in the storage part. Semantics. We are actually uh, collecting data from sensor and converting it into triplets, RE form, and then storing while displaying it, will, an API will be called and it will convert the triplets into JSON format. So basically the semantics is it's being applied on data storage. And, uh, so you're doing the front end, she's doing annotation, you're doing database, is that what it is? Uh, yeah, that's basically Is the sense on sensor ontology something you can't use? Uh, we extend that. Why? Uh, here, actually, the constant we added. Um, it's, oh, actually, I don't have it here. I mm. have my copy, the protege. Because uh, uh, they, they were not completed for the observation part. Uh, they, they had some concept, but they didn't have the instances. They didn't have the ex, uh, explanation of instances, the individual. So we had to actually extend the sensor for the observation part. Okay. Also, we have an idea just uh, for because uh, uh, the current uh, K host data, uh, the same ontology actually uh, is not connected to to other ontology. For example, if we can um, uh, integrate uh, the data.
Okay, nice. So uh, we'll continue in the next class then, uh, because I think we can otherwise complete anyway. So the rest of you class come, you know, better rehearse and let's go through fast in the next class. Okay. Everything. Anybody has any problem with doing the project as such?